Hey everybody, how y'all doing? I see we have two people up there in the corner. Nice. Hope everybody's having a good day. All right, good evening everyone, and welcome to Walking with God. I am your host, Kyle Walker. I am joined this week by our good buddy, Joe. Joe, welcome. Way, man, it's good to see you. <laughs> you too. It is Tuesday, October 17th, and uh, we are going to just go ahead and, and jump right in with just a, a few quick things. Uh, first of all, uh, anyone who ordered a t-shirt, they're in the mail. T-shirts are on the way. So Joe will have his for next week. I am looking forward to it. And that's going to be awesome. So shirts are coming. That's great news. I wanted to give everyone a quick update. If you remember a few weeks ago, we had our friend Mr. B. Mr. B actually sent a message to the show asking for some advice uh, for a situation that he had on if he and his daughter who were living, as I found out, in Alabama should move back home to Florida so that his daughter could be closer to his ex-wife and closer to her mother and then he could be closer to family and he asked everyone's opinion. Many of you ventured an opinion, which I thank you very much for. Got an update from Mr. B. He did go home. Uh, he and his daughter moved back to Florida. He left his good job in Alabama and has already replaced it with a good job in Florida. So everything is coming up roses for Mr. B. So he wanted me to tell you all, thank you very much for all your words and your support and your opinions because he asked for them, we gave them, and everything is going great for Mr. B. So awesome news. I'm super excited to share that with everyone. So with that taken care of, let's jump right in. We are going to do a two-week episode on forgiveness starting tonight. And so the first thing I wanted to do is just kind of give you a little bit of a disclaimer. Um, you know, we're, we're going to come at you real. Uh, we're not going to sugarcoat. We're not going to blow smoke. Um, we're going to talk about various aspects of forgiveness, which is a very all-encompassing and very wide subject. It's not all going to pertain to you, but find what does. Mm -hmm. Find the points that matter to you <coughs> and then zero in on that. And, uh, you know, this is uh, something that we all fight and we all fight it every day. And so we're going to talk about forgiveness. And I just I wanted to tell you guys, this is kind of my little opening statement we're talking about this because I feel that it's going to be helpful. If you think of forgiveness as a battle, an everyday battle is kind of how I feel I feel that it is. Joe and I are not the generals sitting back on the horses telling you guys what to do. Mm -hmm. Absolutely not the case. I, I know that he and I were down in the trenches with you because I am constantly fighting this battle every day of forgiveness and trying to do things the right way and not hold on to certain aspects of my past and my anger. So. Uh, I want you to know that we are not just sitting up here looking down on people and trying to lecture at you. We, we are talking to you. We are not talking at you. We're talking to you. And I, I hope that this will help. And uh, that's what I've got. Joe, your opening statements before the court, please, sir. Before the court. Yeah. And like Kyle said, guys, this is a, this is a very difficult subject. What you're not going to get from Kyle and I tonight is a lot of a lot of humorous little anecdotes. You're not going to get any any like half baked analogies. No, because truth of the matter is, this subject doesn't doesn't warrant those. It it, it merits something much bigger than that. And so we're going to come at this from a real place. And for us to be able to do that, you've heard a little bit of Kyle's story yep. and a little bit of where Kyle comes from with this place of with the through his divorce, through and, divorce. This, yep. and this concept of forgiveness. And I think it would be foolish of me not to be able to say there's an element of this that that I have to share a little bit of myself and where and how I've gotten to the point where I'm at as we wrestle through these things. Two and a half years ago in my home, we hit one of the most difficult spots that we could ever imagine, that we could ever have dreamt of. And I'm not gonna go into a lot of details because I wanna respect the people that were involved on both sides yes. but we invited someone into our home and we cared about them and they trusted us and we I'm sorry they didn't trust we trusted them and and the person we invited into our home and took full advantage of that trust yeah. and attempted to hurt at that point in time my four-year-old it was a very difficult time it was something that that and, I'm, and I apologize if I get a little emotional on this. It was something that we had to work through and forgiveness became a question that I had to wrestle with of am I going to forgive or am I going to 
hang on to this? Do I want this to be something that I carry? And the truth of the matter is, guys, is in that process, I realized there were five barriers that I put up in my own way that are things that we're going to talk about tonight. Mm -hmm. But they're barriers that I had to come up with an answer to. They're barriers that I had to come up with a, a legitimate heart and head reason to be able to move beyond. And so Kyle and I are going to talk about those this evening. And I can't help but think that these barriers, maybe you can't put words to what you, what, what are the barriers that keep you from forgiving someone, but maybe these will help you with that. Right. And the only way I know is to be able to say this is the order in which I went through these. And we're going to talk about them sh quickly. Yeah. Well, probably not too quickly. We're going to take time when we need to, and we're going to break these things down. And like always, I'm going to bring Scripture to this and be able to say this is what Scripture says. Because in my opinion, this is my opinion, Scripture is the only real answer to this. The Jesus that I find in Scripture is the only real answer to any of these barriers that I find, that I put in my own way, and I want to be able to explain that. Mm -hmm. So, you know, Kyle, the first thing that, the first barrier that I that I put in my way is, man, I can't forgive this person. They haven't apologized. Yeah. Yeah. Um, they haven't apologized. They don't. Um, they. They aren't. They're even sorry. Right. So, I, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna forgive them because. It just doesn't seem like that would be the right thing to do. Sure. And so, I, I don't know about you, and I don't know if that's something that you ever dealt with when you were walking through your through your divorce. And I know a little bit of 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 your backstory. Yep. But no, I, is let's... is this a barrier that you ran into? This is absolutely a barrier that I ran into. Um, here's what happened, and uh, again, I. I'm... I've always been honest with you guys about my situation. This is not going to be ex-wife bashing in any way, shape, or form. This is factual, and this is how the conversation went. Nine months after my divorce, I, uh, I was on a phone call with my ex-wife, and I will freely admit that on that phone call, I was ready to put nine months of pain and hurt behind me. Um, I knew about the situation that had happened with a coworker of hers. Really nothing at this point was secret anymore. And I wanted as Joe just said, I wanted the apology. I wanted the apology that she cheated on me, that this divorce came because of another guy. I wanted it right then so that I, at the time, thought that I could just forgive and move on and everything would be the days of wine and roses afterwards. So on this phone call, as I, it, it was an hour and a half long, as I'm sitting there trying every way, every different angle to approach, kind of getting this out of her, here's what I got at the very end. I did not get an apology for the extramarital affair. The apology sounded like this. I'm sorry that what I did hurt you. Mm. Not I'm sorry for doing it. Yeah. Just I'm sorry that you were hurt because of it. Yeah. You know, I, I, I'm sorry that this hurt your feelings. But in her mind, and I even asked this question and the answer was yes. In her mind, the ends justified the means. The ends of having or the, the end of divorcing me and being with the new guy was justified in her actions of breaking her vows taken before friends, family, and God. So that's the closest I ever got to an apology. Now, is that an apology that you can forgive immediately off of? Well, I'll tell you, no. No, it did not. And again, if you remember my timeline, I was not anywhere close to returning to church at that point. I was still very, very, very far away from God. So if you want to if you want to take just a guess on how my response was to that, I'm pretty sure you can fill in the blanks uh, based on what you know of me and sure. where I was at that point in my life. Sure. So. You know, Kyle, it's it's interesting, and I I have to wrestle with these things in two separate ways. Okay. I have to wrestle with them intellectually yes. and emotionally. Yep. And and intellectually is not always the most difficult part. That's oftentimes the easiest part for me. Sure. And when i was when i was wrestling through this idea of forgiveness and when i've had to wrestle through this idea of forgiveness in the past mm -hmm. you know the the thing that the thing that continued to pop out is that forgiveness is a personal thing yes reconciliation is a mutual thing mm -hmm. reconciliation takes place between two people yeah. forgiveness though is a decision that i make mm -hmm. you know and and but then the other side of this is and that's and I can I know I knew this. I mean, I knew this going into that that mm -hmm. forgiveness was something that is totally on me. Yeah. Um, it had nothing to do with anybody else. 
but it was that heart level thing that I couldn't get my mind around. And you know, I said, guys, we go back to that basis of Jesus, and that's where I li- that's that's where I have to wrestle heart level, is in, in that basis of Jesus. And it was interesting because the reading that I was going through at that point in time was centered in in the book of Luke, right around the crucifixion, right, and the days leading up to it, and the crucifixion, and the days following. And there's a spot in here in Luke, in Luke twenty three thirty four where it says, Father, forgive them for they know not what they're doing. Mm -hmm. You know, he's looking out in the crowd who are jeering him and making fun and hitting him and throwing things at him. And he he looks and in the midst of this, Jesus says, Father, forgive them. They do not know what they are doing. Now, I believe firmly that that the person who invaded the trust and of my family knew what they were doing in the moment, but they did not understand the long term ramifications. Okay. They knew in the moment that what they were doing made them made them feel good. They knew in the moment that what they were doing s- satisfied a need, but they didn't understand the long-term ramifications. So it became did they did they apologize? No, but Jesus set the example that says, "I'm supposed to offer forgiveness regardless of the station of someone else's heart." Mm-hmm. And the crazy part about this is Christ is hanging on the cross and he's saying, Father, forgive them for they do not know what they are doing. That verse continues, it says, and they continue to cast lots for his clothing. Right. It wasn't like he said, Father, forgive them, and it was done. Yeah, and they weren't asking for that forgiveness. They weren't asking for it. They right. didn't think they needed it. Sure. They felt justified in what they were doing. But, but Jesus still went and said, forgive. And so that's how I had to wrestle with that one on a heart level. I mean, I knew that forgiveness was personal, that reconciliation was mutual, but forgiveness was personal. Okay, so I, I, let me Go pause ahead. you right there. I've, I've got a little surprise for Joe. And this is something I want to caution everyone on. When I first got my divorce, I ran out and I grabbed every self-help book that I could on how to deal with this stuff. Now, we just heard that forgiveness is personal, and we've heard how it's based in Scripture. Well, here's this book that I dug out from my divorce days. And I want to read you guys just a little piece of it. And then you tell me if this is in line with what we're talking about. All right, so this this person has said, what is genuine forgiveness? Unlike refusing to forgive, cheap forgiveness, or acceptance, genuine forgiveness is essentially interpersonal. Okay, that sounds right. Mm -hmm. It requires the heartfelt participation of both of you. Here are its three core interpersonal features. Genuine forgiveness is a transaction, okay? But here's where I really wanted to focus. Genuine forgiveness is conditional. Mm. Genuine forgiveness must be earned. It comes with Mm. a price that the offender must be willing to pay. In exchange, the hurt party must allow him or her to settle his or her, her debt. As he works hard to earn forgiveness through genuine, generous acts of repentance and restitution, the hurt party works hard to let go of her resentment and need for retribution. If, e- if either one of you fails to do the requisite work, there can be no genuine forgiveness. So, so your Kyle, thoughts, sir. So, Kyle, I, I first thing when you were reading this, I almost said a word that I'd have to ask forgiveness for. Um, <laughs> yeah, but here's the deal. I and and I referenced this earlier that forgiveness is a personal thing and mm-hmm. sh- she landed on that and I yes. think she was right. She stopped there though. But she but that that reconciliation is a mutual thing. Mm-hmm. And I think that a mistake that we can make is that um is is that we think we can confuse forgiveness and reconciliation. Yes. Reconciliation is something that requires repentance. Sure. It requires mutual work. It often, it, truthfully, and listen to me, truthfully, it almost 100% of the time requires mutual repentance. Yeah. It re, Because regardless of the situation, it is very rare that only one person has a bit to play in it. <laughs> oh, no. Everyone. And so. It takes two to tango. It does. Yeah. And so. Where I think where she went awry, when the, went astray, when she, where she went awry was in the fact that she said forgiveness can only happen mm-hmm. through the work of another. Genuine, genuine forgiveness. forgiveness. Well, genuine reconciliation can only happen 
With both. With both. Right. Paul mentions this in 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 one of his letters where he says, "To all that you can control, do your best to live at peace, to be reconciled mm -hmm. with one another. But to all, only to all that you can control. Right. To live in sheer reconciliation, it takes both. Mm -hmm. But yeah. So, but that's that's the first barrier that I ran into. Kyle, right. Is, yep. is this whole idea of I can't do this because they haven't apologized. Sure. The second one is I don't feel like forgiving. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And and if you don't mind, I want to kick this one off just a little bit. Fire away, Gridley. Because, because guys, the, what I want you to hear is is this incredible little quote that I that I picked up from a lady named Corey Ten Boom. Corey Ten Boom, if you are not aware of who she is, she's a Holocaust survivor. Um, her family was murdered in front of her. At one point in time, later in life, she ran across the person who did this. Yeah. And yeah. he asked for her forgiveness. And now this was the guy who was responsible for killing her for, whole family. For her for killing her, killing her family. Her whole yeah. family. Yes. Um, all the family that was in the concentration camp with her. Right. Okay. She called him one of the most ruthless guards at that concentration camp. And and she talks about how she couldn't forgive on her own because mm -hmm. she didn't feel like it until she realized this thing, that forgiveness is an act of will. Yeah. And will can function regardless of the temperature of the heart. Mm -hmm. We Forgiveness is a choice. Not a feeling. Right. If we're dependent upon our heart to tell us when it's time, the heart is fickle. The yeah, heart yeah. will change. Yeah. The heart can go up and down with the waves of the ocean. I don't know about you guys, but there are moments when I wake up in the morning and I'm having a great day and it takes one little thing. And my heart goes here and I'm angry and I'm vengeful and I have all this stuff going on inside of me that I know is not correct and I have to make decisions even in the midst of those emotions we all have to make decisions in the middle of emotions mm -hmm. forgiveness is a decision even Jesus dealt with this yep you know the first time I was it was either the first or the second time I happened to come on here we talked okay. about posture I yes. think it was the first time first time and there's in also in the book of Luke there is this spot, and I said, we went back to this moment where Jesus was how I wrestled with this heart deep. Where Jesus is in the Garden of Gethsemane, mm -hmm. and he knows what's about to come. And he knows what's about to come. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is, this is rough. I mean, he's about to get injured. He's about to get hurt. Brutally he's hurt. about to get killed, knowing this is about to happen and that he doesn't deserve it. And his response is, Father, if there is any way to take this cup from me, I would appreciate that. But mm -hmm. I'm choosing your will over my own. We have a choice to make when it comes to forgiveness. It's not an easy choice. No, no, it's, it's not. One hundred percent not an easy choice. And please don't think I'm downplaying any of your hurt. Because like Kyle and I were saying earlier, we both understand hurt. We might not know exactly what you're feeling, but I promise you we've been in the zip code. Oh, sure. And so, so understand that this is, it's difficult, but it's a decision you have to make. And it's, once I got past this question, mm -hmm. you know, then the floodgates opened for, for three more, but... But this was a huge deal, and it's where I got stuck the longest because I didn't feel like forgiving. Mm -hmm. The truth of the matter was I loved, and I still love, the person who perpetrated something in my home. They had lived with us for a long time. I wanted to hate, but I couldn't. Right. Because it's not who I was called to be, and it's not who Jesus let me be in that moment. Praise Jesus, he didn't let me hate, or we wouldn't be having this conversation. <laughs> nope. It was a decision I had to make. I could have held on to it. I could have carried it. Mm -hmm. and But I didn't. And I, and I would challenge you, if this is where you're at, realize this is a decision you get to make. You can do what you want with it. 
but it it will ch change the trajectory of where you go forward from this point on. And now correct me if I'm wrong, but it might be a decision you have to make every day. It's a decision I still make every, every day. Every day. It's, it's a decision I make every day, oftentimes multiple times a day. Right. Now I will say, the more I've made this decision, the less often I have to make it. Sure. Initially, it was a decision I had to make 40 times a, forty times an hour. Mm -hmm. Now it's once or twice a day. Yep. I'm two and a half years removed from this. Sure. And it's still once or twice a day. There are going to be days when I don't have to, when I don't have to that much. There are days when I have to more. Mm -hmm. But it's still a decision that I have to continually make. And for all of, uh, all of my divorce compadres, you're going to have to make that decision a lot, especially if you have kids. Especially if you, if you have to work with your ex, whether it be ex-wife or ex-husband, uh, and I've told you before, you know, treat it like a business transaction. You guys are in the business of raising children together. So whatever's happened previously, you are going to have to make your choice to forgive what's happened because that, for divorce folks, that's what's best for your children. So mm -hmm. I just want to make sure I throw that out there as my two cents on the second, our second bullet point here. Yeah, and you know, Kyle, the, the third thing that I ran into mm -hmm. And, and, you know, we talked about this before, and you said this one kind of has your name all over it. Yeah, a so, little bit, a little bit. So, I don't have a lot to say about this. Throw it out but there. But I'm going to say what it is, and then I want to say one thing, and then I want to hand it off to you. Fire away. Um, is, that, is that I don't want my hurt not to matter anymore. Right. This, truthfully, guys, and Kyle's going to hit on this heavily, it's a question of identity. Mm -hmm. we, we feel that if... We, I felt that if I let this go, if I forgave this, then what had happened in my home wouldn't matter anymore because I would have had to move on, you know? And so slowly I was allowing this to become my identity. I ran across this really cool quote okay. and um, it says, forgiveness is not about absolution. Mm -hmm. It is about relieving oneself of the identity of a victim and moving into our true identity. Yeah. And this idea of identity of of being a victim. Yep. I I truthfully think that, you know, we can all fall into that and we can fall into it multiple times. Why do pigs go back to their own stuff? Because it's warm there. Yeah, that's right. That's and right. it's comfortable. Yep. Not because they want to smell bad, but because they're, it's what they're accustomed to. Mm -hmm. Don't hear me, I'm not calling any of you pigs. But <laughs> the idea call me is that. the same. Yes, So, is. So Kyle, I'm gonna toss this off sure. to you for a moment, what? and then when you're done talking, I have just one more thing to say. Sure, well, and this is something that we've talked about on a previous episode, it's, uh, it's finding your identity and your pain. And we talked about, for us divorced folks, we we ceased to become you know i for so many probably years i was not kyle walker i was the divorced guy because i just lived in that pain as long as i could and due to the unfairness of my situation i had to make sure i brought it up as much as possible now i'm allowed to for the sake of this show because that's kind of what this is about but i would live in that all the time it became who i was i was the divorced guy and as we've talked about previously when you find you know, when you find out who you really are, well, no, I'm not a divorce guy. I'm a Christ follower who's been through divorce. And now I am a, a Christ, Christ follower with a divorce show who wants to help other people. And I've told you from day one, I want to help you skip some of the steps that I personally took because I know they go nowhere, except maybe head first into a brick wall and it hurts. So yeah, it, I, I felt for so long like my pain didn't matter. And it's because I never got that apology, looping back to, to our first question, I never got the apology for what happened to me. So therefore, my pain matters more than everyone else's because I'm still hurt, I've still never gotten the apology, things have still never felt better, and I just lived there for so long. And I, I will take this point right now. I see that we've got 11 people watching. If any of these 11 people who are currently watching knew me seven years ago and knew the nonsense that I spewed out into the world, I apologize to you right here and right now because it was ridiculous. I was letting my hurt and my pain determine who I was 
And when I figured out who I was in that hurt and pain, I forced it upon everyone else. Mm -hmm. And what good did it do? Mm -hmm. Well, it cost me friendships. It probably cost me some respect and rightfully so. Because when you carry on in such a juvenile manner, it's going to cost you more than you see in that moment. When you let your pain talk, it's going to say stupid things and it's going to cost you more than you realize because you're not thinking clearly. So yeah, no, I wanted to live in my pain. My pain is who I was. I was angry and I was going to let everyone know I was angry. I was treated unfairly and I was going to let everyone know I was treated unfairly. And then I told you, even just this calendar year, my boy Clint, you know, shout out if you're watching, who told me that even though my situation was unfair, it's not any less unfair just because I don't live in it anymore. And I don't live in that unfairness. And I don't live in the fact that I was the victim, that victim mentality that so many of us have. And it's prevalent in the divorce world. I get that. Both sides think they're victims. Both sides think they're treated unfairly. And both sides are mad at the other side because, oh, it's all their fault that I'm so angry or I'm so this or I'm so that. And so we, we've all been there. And some of us stay there longer than others. I probably stayed there way too long. And I, yeah, I, I've suffered because of it. And again, I want to put myself out there so that you don't follow down the roads that I went down and do some of the silly, stupid things that I did. And I did a lot of them. Yeah. You know, and and the truth is, guys, oftentimes the as Kyle said, the stupid things that we do and I and or the or the things that we do in the moment. In the moment. In the moment that, that again make us feel better. In for a for a temp for, for that, that for that long. Yeah. They whether it be tossing something out on social media yeah, or speaking ill of someone oh, in that. front of other folks that that would would have relationship there yep you know yep been or there. Been there. asking folks to pick sides oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. or or truthfully i mean sometimes it's acting out in anger towards that person sure you know whether oh, yeah. it be raising your voice or or worse than that because i mean some folks that it, it doesn't stop at a voice thing no no and and each one of those things just further nails that thought of this is who i am mm -hmm. i am my hurt yep guys regardless of whether your pain was was something that was done to you, yep. something that was done to someone around you that yep. still affected you, something that you, you were a mutual participant in, mm -hmm. your pain does not have to define you. When I wrestled through this, the answer that I knew, the answer that I knew was this idea that forgiveness is not about absolution. Right. I knew I didn't have those words. Somebody else is much more eloquent than I am. A little smarter than us. Yeah, it didn't yeah. take a lot. Nope. Um, but that's what I knew. But what I learned from from my time with Jesus, and I had a friend of mine, dear friend, his name is Jimmy, and Jimmy's a dear friend of mine, and he goes, Joe, I need you to listen to who Jesus says you are mm -hmm. and what Jesus says about you. And he just started speaking the gospel of Jesus into my life. And he was saying things like, there's no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. We are a new creation. The old is gone and the new has come. Right. We are more than conquerors. And he looked at me and he goes, and I'm going to use a non-pastoral word here and it's okay. Um, he goes, Joe, you are a freaking child of the King of Kings. You are a co-heir to the throne. He goes, that, he says, it's, it's an amazing thing. He goes, yeah, in this moment you're hurting. Right. He goes, but your dad says there's no condemnation. Your dad says there is, that you are a new creation. Your dad says you are worth 100% of everything that he did. Right even though you don't necessarily feel like it. Right. So guys, the answer to, I don't want my hurt to not matter anymore, mm -hmm. is, is really, where's your identity? Yeah. Where do you want it to be? 
do you want it to be in a spot that says I'm a victim because my friends I know people who have lived that and are still living that and if you live there you become you become angry you become hurt and you get to a point where you think the entire world is against you and I'm telling you it is not or you can find your identity in the one who created you and what he says about you that was that was a huge thing yeah um yep. and but to realize i don't want my hurt to not matter anymore mm -hmm. wasn't necessarily about my hurt it was about my identity right yep you know and the next, just a piece of it it is yeah. it is the next two are, are going to sound real similar yeah. but there's a key difference and i want to make sure we hit on the key difference and the first one is i want the scales to be equaled it means i am owed something sure now, initially I felt I was owed an apology. Yeah. And then I just felt I was owed something and I had no clue what in the world I was owed, but I felt that I was owed something. That my family was owed something. Mm -hmm. And I was not okay with this <laughs> idea of not being able to be, to, to get what we I felt we had coming to us. Mm -hmm. Even though I didn't know what in the world that was. Yeah. And you know and as i was working through as i was working through that it's i felt that all right hey if if what do, what do i what do i deserve i don't know but what i but what i felt was i i can't forgive this because what i'm owed is the is not to excuse this i right. can't excuse this and and you know so guys when we forgive evil we don't excuse it we don't tolerate it we don't we don't smother it. We don't hug it. We don't make it all good. We look evil in the face and call it what it is. And it's a hurt. Mm -hmm. What are we owed? We're owed the honesty that what you're walking through hurts. Yes. What you're walking through, other people might not think would hurt. Other people might look at it and say, that's not that big of a deal. Eh. But I'm telling you, in the moment what you're walking through it hurts and i can't apologize for others but what i can say is i am incredibly sorry that you're walking through this and my level of sorry is nothing nothing compared to the hurt that my heavenly father feels as you hurt so what do we really deserve? This is where I had to answer this. What did I really feel that I deserved? What was I owed? I wasn't owed anything. But what I was given was the compassion of Jesus and the love of others who didn't understand what I was going through. Right. right. But they understood that I was hurting. And so, you know, here's here's the thing. And this is, I'm going to prop the phone line just for a second here. <laughs> we haven't done this and I know that we tr Kyle put it up here but if you guys if you're walking through something guys the numbers on your screen please don't hesitate to call us Kyle will answer his phone it'll ring right here. and we'll talk to you sure because I want to be able to tell you how sorry I am and be able to remind you how much more our Heavenly Father hurts and mourns with you. So that was the answer. That mm -hmm. was not only the intellectual answer. The intellectual answer is I didn't even know what I needed. Right. I didn't know what I was owed. <laughs> I just felt I was owed something. Sure. The hard answer was I wasn't owed anything. Right. But I was gifted compassion. Mm -hmm. I was gifted mercy. I was gifted love. Those were gifts. They weren't they weren't something I fought for and, and earned. They were right. just something that was gifted to me and something that you guys are gifted as well, if you're willing to receive it. Mm -hmm. And Kyle, the last one of these is is a huge one. Yes. And Time Magazine wrote an article three years ago and they talked about forgiveness and the process of forgiveness and why people don't forgive. Okay. And they wrote about three paragraphs on a couple of things. And then they wrote three pages on this last one. Mm -hmm. 
which which is I want justice. Right. Yep. And, and justice is is a it's an understandable desire. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm sure there were times when you wanted justice. Oh, sure. There were times when I wanted justice and it didn't feel like we were going to get it. Right. Yeah. And ultimately, you're not going to get it probably in the way that you think. But yeah, in my situation, let's see, I, I wanted justice. I want justice for the, well, it's getting close to about $150,000 now I've paid. Uh, post-divorce, um, where I live, you know, under the poverty line. Uh, I, I often thought, well, you know, I, I really want her new marriage to fall apart. And, you know, that might be justice. Although really it's not because I don't wish divorce on my worst enemy. We all know how awful it is. And that even includes my ex-wife. I don't want them to get divorced because it's terrible. And ultimately it would affect my kids. But yeah, no, I wanted justice for every wrong, every wrong I suffered from my ex-wife, every mm -hmm. wrong I've suffered in the uh, oh-so-fun world of adult dating, uh, every financial justice that I could get. Yeah, I, you want it all, don't you? I sure did. So yeah, wanting justice, I think is, you, know, you might think that you're just, you know, oh, well, I, I want this and I deserve this, but that is 100% a detriment to your being able to forgive. Yeah. And you may not think it, it may just be, well, you know, it'd be a nice thought if I got that money back. Well, that's still stopping you. You know, I, you know <laughs> ha ha, tee hee, it'd be really funny if he cheated on her. No, no, that that's not funny at all. But you're going to think these silly thoughts, but that's actually hindering your forgiving the person, the situation, and even yourself for the role that you played. And as we touched on earlier, nobody's innocent. Nobody has done everything exactly right. I did not do everything exactly right. I have thought of maybe 150,000 ways I could have been a better husband at that time. But that ship has sailed. But just remember, nobody walks away scot-free here. Yeah. Guys, there is a really interesting... There's a really interesting current that's rising in society mm -hmm. that people are beginning to talk about this thing called restorative justice. Restorative justice. The crazy part of it is they think it's a new idea. Yeah, no, it's not. And it's not. Um, Ecclesiastes says there's nothing new under the sun. <laughs> um, but restorative justice is, is the Jesus way of doing things. Um, there, there are two main types of justice that, that I think that we can look at. There's punitive justice, which says, Kyle punched me, so I'm going to punch him back, and maybe twice. I have a bad heart. Don't do that. I won't. Okay. Um, please don't start it then. You know, I'm, but I'm not gonna. I know you won't. <laughs> <laughs> but punitive justice says, they harmed me, so I'm going to harm them in return. And I'd say that's our default. And it, and it is our default. Mm -hmm. It's the, the truth of the matter is, eye for an eye is our default. Yes. And because oftentimes we are raised in a way that says, if they hit you, hit them back. Yes. You know, if we're not raised in a forgiving environment, we're not raised in an environment, whether it be at school or anywhere else, that says, forgive. Mm -hmm. But Jesus came, and honestly, in the Old Testament, puni punitive justice was what there was. It was kind of brutal back then. It was really rough. Yeah. I got to be honest, it was rough. But Jesus came and he altered that. Yes. You know, and he moved it to this spot of restorative justice. And, and I love 2 Corinthians 5. It says, For God was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself, no longer continuing pe no, no, I'm sorry, no longer counting people's sins against them. And he gave us the wonderful message of reconciliation, mm -hmm. of restoring things. Guys, our responsibility is, with forgiveness and justice, the most true form of justice we can have is to forgive another. Mm -hmm. Abraham Lincoln says, I've always found that mercy bears more fruit than strict justice. Forgiveness is me giving up the right to hurt you for hurting me. 
That's big. But it goes beyond that, too. Rest- forgiveness is claiming restorative justice and saying, while things may never be exactly the same, and please don't hear, if you've been wronged, if you've been wronged majorly, if you've been hurt by someone physically, or if you've been hurt by by an affair, or if you've been hurt, I'm not saying things are going to go back to what they once were. Because truth of the matter is, what they once were was faulty. What I'm saying is that as we work for restoration, it's more about restoring someone vertically with Jesus than it is about horizontally with me. One of the prayers I pray on a daily basis, and it's one of the more difficult things that I have to pray, and sometimes I have to be honest with Jesus and say I'm saying this because I know I'm supposed to not because I want to is that I I pray that there comes a day that the person who violated the trust in my home finds himself in a place where he gets to meet Jesus and that something radically changes in him not so that we can be restored to something what it once was but so that he can be restored to the life that he was designed for. Because the truth is, he'll never be in my home again. Never. That wound, that chasm has been built. But that doesn't mean that we can't work towards restoring not only his relationship vertically, but mine. Because that's what Jesus did Mm -hmm. Jesus hanging on the cross rebuilt a bridge between us and 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 his father the cross is one of those things it's it's such an amazing thing and it is that bridge it's it's the ultimate source of forgiveness Mm -hmm. it's also the ultimate source of justice even though what was done to Jesus was so unjust a little bit he allowed injustice injustice to be perpetrated upon him to enact true justice. Mm -hmm. Revelation 21 says, He will wipe every tear from their eyes, and there will will be no more death or sorrow or crying and pain. Restorative justice is not about a temporary let's make things feel better or make the scales even Mm -hmm. or make them apologize or make me feel like my hurt doesn't matter, my, my, my hurt still matters. Restorative justice is about letting them encounter the one who can ultimately forgive them and re-engaging with the one who can ultimately forgive me. Mm-hmm. That's, the, that's, that's justice. It's a big idea. And truthfully, we're going to talk a lot more about it next week. Yes. Yes, we will. But, you know, Kyle, um, as a as a way to just kind of wrap this, mm-hmm. this bit up here, we all have barriers. Yes. And maybe what we talked about today can let you put words to your barriers. Mm-hmm. Maybe it did. Hopefully. Um I would imagine that that covered a good portion of almost anything that anybody's going to be any lie that they can tell themselves. Yeah, well, like because I said, it's true. Yeah. They're, they're lies. They are, and you know they're not all going to pertain to you, like we said at the front. But hopefully, one of these has your name on. Yeah, it. one one or two of them has to point at you. There, there's no way that they can't. So, and, yeah, and and the answer, and I know this this is called walking with God with Kyle Walker. Indeed. And every time I come on here, I say that the, there's the, the end zone is Jesus or these other mm-hmm. things. The answer to this is Jesus. The answer to this is Jesus. He is the source. He's where we need to run when we're hurt. He's where we need to run to be able to answer the lies that are put in front of us. He is the only true answer. But even knowing that isn't always enough. Which 
really does kind of lead us into the segue for next week, mm -hmm. and then we'll we'll pray and wrap this thing up. That's right. So but go ahead and tell tell all that you can disclose about next week, guys. One of the things that I've learned through my through this process of being able to forgive to the extent that I've been able to, right, is that excuse me, you're good. <coughs> is that I can only forgive to the point that I've allowed Jesus to forgive me. Mm -hmm. I can only forgive to the point that I've allowed myself to be filled with forgiveness. It goes that way with love and mercy and goodness and, and kindness. I can only be kind to the extent that I've allowed Jesus to be kind to me. Right. I can only love to the extent that I've allowed Jesus to love me. And I found that in this situation, there was a little bit that I was still hanging on to. And, and, and the truth is, it was because I had some stuff in me that I was like, okay, this is too big for Jesus to forgive. And so what we're going to talk about next week mm -hmm. is what does receiving forgiveness really look like? Not only horizontally, because there is this horizontal thing of oh, yeah. how do we seek out forgiveness? Because while we've talked today about the hurts that you have felt, we also have to be honest with the fact that we have all damaged someone else or multiple others to, to a great degree. I oh, mean, yeah. we have to be honest about this. There's no one here who is without fault, right. who is without blame, who is without the need to be forgiven at times true statement true statement but we also want to wrestle with what does it look like to receive forgiveness vertically yes which after we wrestle through that and i got a really good buddy coming to help us with this he's awesome you don't want to miss him that's right and but as we wrestle through that then we can ask the question how do we forgive others yes how do, once we've answered these barriers and once we've got here, what does forgiving others really look like? So guys, this next week is going to be so much more fun than this week. Yeah, this, I, this I was just a slow week. got to be honest. The down week. Yeah. i got to be honest. Next week is going to be so much more fun. We <laughs> tried to make this week encouraging as much as we could. As much as you can. But this is a heavy subject. Next week's going to be so much fun. <laughs> I pray that what we've accomplished this week is we've been able to put some some words to where your barriers are and that we've done our best to level the playing field a little bit so that you know it's just not two guys sitting up here like on our, like Kyle said generals on our horses no I don't own a horse <laughs> um, if I did he'd kick me um, probably and probably bite me too it'd be mm. a bad day I might have to bite him back um, no eye for an eye. We just went over that. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. But it's a horse. So Main for a main. <laughs> so, guys, join us next week. Yep. Um, Kyle, I know you might have a little bit of housekeeping to do. Oh, maybe here just to hear. Into this, and yep. and uh, I know we want to pray. Indeed. So I'm what I'm going to do is I'm going to be quiet. And I'm going to let you carry it from here, buddy. <laughs> Thank you. This has been walking with Joe. Uh, whatever. <laughs> whatever. <laughs> yeah. No, not much housekeeping. Uh, thank you all very much for watching tonight. Yes, this this was the more serious of the two episodes. Next week, with who's coming, it is going to be. Uh, it is really going to be so much fun. I am it's like be a blast. Stupid excited right now. Um, yes, we are going to take this out. In prayer, and you know, just just to reiterate, you know, yes, we we all have our faults, and when and you know, again, I'm speaking to my divorce people as we're kind of the the main focus of this show. You know, nobody here is without fault, and everyone has done things to hurt other people. And I love the idea that you can only forgive others as much as you've accepted forgiveness, and that is once you get your head around that. Let me tell you, folks, it's a different ball game. It really is, and it took me years and years and years before I even ha I could even entertain that notion, because I would just always cast it off as, no, I I've done too much wrong to be forgiven, or I can't forgive them, and it's because I couldn't accept forgiveness for myself, and it can turn into just this very vicious cycle, and you're just you're chasing your own tail, and it's awful. So again, my whole point in this entire show, for however many weeks we've been doing it avoid the stupid mistakes that I have made so th there is another big one if I can pass along anything 
it is that this this forgiveness issue is just so big you know you've got to be able to accept it before you can give it and we're going to work on that next week you know please this this show is available about 30 seconds after i get done hitting the button send it to a friend share it like it watch it again if you think there's a point that you need to go over again and then please send us messages you can send it to us on facebook if you have a question for joe or a question for our guest next week or you just want me to be quiet send us messages and everything will be great joe take us home in prayer and then we're gonna wrap up more than happy to buddy jesus just want to say thank you um i thank you for the opportunity that you've uh you've given all of us to begin this conversation because truthfully there's absolutely no way to encapsulate this conversation in one hour or even two but I, I thank you for the opportunity that we had to begin this conversation it's been a pleasure just talking to you for the last hour and and being able to share the things that you've taught us so lord um, i say i love you and i will talk with you again real soon amen amen all right this sunday is the running of the Marine Corps Marathon. That's why I'm wearing my Washington hat. I went and ran the Marine Corps Marathon in 2015. Amazing race. So if anyone out there that is watching this is running that, good luck to you. I hope the wind is at your back. Enjoy every moment of it because it is momentous and historic. So there we go. Go runners. Such a such a fun race. Uh, I'm glad. I, you can't see it. I've got my... Oh, no, it's over here. There, there's my Marine Corps Marathon emblem right there. Awesome. So anyway... Everyone come back next week for our special guest. We'll probably run over a half hour yet again, but hopefully nobody minds. And then we're off for Halloween the week after that. So everyone get your costumes and get ready to go get candy because it's sugar time. So have a great week, everyone. <laughs> we will see you in seven days. Say bye, Joe. See you later, everybody. Bye, Joe. There you go. <laughs>